Hi everyone, Laura Wilson from Gold Star Work here. Today is day three of building a daily art habit. Now today is going to be a bit of a rush day. I've got to take my oldest girl into the airport, so I'm going to be very limited on time. So I need to find something really, really easy to do and achievable. And there are going to be days like this in the next month where really normally I would have just said I, I don't have time to do any painting today but I'm making a real effort to try and find the time to do it so during this video we're going to talk about finding easy solutions breaking things up into small bits and how to actually get going even on the hard days when you've got no motivation to actually do it anyway. So we're going to talk a bit about that while we paint a Northern Lights painting. So let's get going. Okay, today I've got really limited time, so I'm going to do another painting for this day three building a daily art habit of um, something I've started. This is actually four different paintings that I've started of some Northern Lights, and I'm just going to do this one here. Now, if you would like to do a painting of Northern Lights, I have done a step by step blog, which I'll link in the description below. And um, this is a really, really simple, easy way to do it. The, the simplest way I've found to paint the Northern Lights. So if you're interested in that, then go to the description box below and you can have a look at the step-by-step -step instructions and follow along doing your own Northern Lights picture. So what I've done so far with this, I've just completely painted this black, splattered some white stars on, and I've done this shape in white of what, where I want the northern lights to go and then for this one here I have just done a very thin mixture of blue over the top of this. So I'm going to carry on and do this one and then that will be our day three of getting some painting done and creating a painting habit. So I'm going to zoom in on here and get started. So this northern light picture is going to be mostly purples and greens. So I'm going to use the same paints that I used yesterday on my palette. So I've got, got my palette with the paints that I used yesterday and the interference paints as well. Now I haven't got much time today because actually taking my eldest girl to the airport. She's off to university for the f her first year. So big exciting changes for her. It'll be very strange not having her home all the time. The airport's about an hour away and we have to um, get there a certain amount of time before the plane takes off and, and I'm sure my my youngest will then want to go and do a bit of shopping in a town she doesn't usually go to. So I'm picking we're going to be home reasonably late. So I'm just doing this in the morning before we go because I am committed to doing our daily art habit. Just mixed a bit of yellow into that phthalo green to make a bit of a brighter green there. I've put the paint on and then I'm going to wash my brush out. And then with just a damp brush I'm spreading that colour out. 
to give a nice blend and a bit of a wash. Just need a bit more water. That's one of the great things about the Atelier paints that I'm using is that it's summer here where I am and it's quite hot even this early in the morning and things dry really fast but because I've just put the paint on there and this bit here was actually starting to dry off now with normal acrylic paint that would have been it I wouldn't have been able to spread it but because I'm using the Atelier interactive paints I can just put a bit of water on it and it'll spread so that's that's a great thing about those paints. It's one of the reasons why I love them so much. A little bit of blue. Now this morning while I had my cup of tea, I was listening to another TED Talk. Not sponsored by TED Talk, just I seem to be finding a lot of videos on there that I quite like listening to and find quite inspiring. So this morning the TED Talk I was listening to was called Forget Big Change and Start with a Tiny Habit by BJ Fogg. That's Fogg with two G's if you want to look it up on the TED Talks. And he was talking lots of different information, too much for me to remember and, and pass on, but lots of different information about making changes in doing small changes to create lasting habits. So some of the points that he was talking about were things like to make changes, there are certain things you need to do. So you can change your environment or your social environment. So with the environment in terms of art, make sure that you've got somewhere to paint, that you've got the equipment you need that you can actually do the painting and surround yourself with supportive people who value what you're doing or are supportive of, of what you're trying to do are really important factors in making change. And the other thing is that He's talking about motivation, that the only reason he says motivation exists is to do hard things. So to get you over that hump of doing hard things, that's what you need motivation for. So um, if you've got a hard task, your motivation is there to get started and going, but then it kind of peters out and then it's hard to keep going. So what he's talking about, instead of relying on motivation or willpower, because he was giving examples of getting fit and losing weight. Instead of re relying on the motivation and the willpower, you make your tasks small and easy so that it requires very little motivation to actually go and achieve them. So for this morning, I thought, well, I don't have much time and normally I would have just set up. I haven't got time to do this today, so I'm not going to bother. I'm busy, but I found something really easy and achievable this, for this painting. It's very easy and achievable for me, and it shouldn't take too much time. So therefore, I can get on and do it. It doesn't take a lot of motivation for me to go and do it. It's not a huge task. So I've, I've picked something easy to do that I can just get on with. He says you need three things in order to achieve things, to get things done and create a new habit. So one of them is a reason to do it. So why am I wanting to make art my daily habit? Well, I want to improve my art skills for a start. I don't want to end up having a huge long break again like I did while I, while I was having children. 
where I just didn't get anything done. I wasn't doing any art for 10 years. I know it's a really good stress release for me. So it's good for my mental health. Being creative every day is something that's really good for my mental health, which I know. And um, even just these last two days of doing my art, my mood's been so much better. It sort of takes you out of your head thinking about other stresses in life and you can just lose yourself in, a, in something else for a while. I think that's part of why art's such a good stress release. I'm actually using a bit of interference paint now. And just putting in a bit of reflective colour. So now what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so you need three things. So, so one of them is the motivation, which is the reason why you're doing it. So on those days that it's really hard to pick up that paintbrush and get on with some painting, the thing that will keep you going is the reason why you're doing it. So part of the part of my reasons I've is also that I want to be an artist. I want to be able to call myself an artist. Now in my head that means that I'm doing my art regularly and I'm actually selling my art regularly. Now for a lot of people being an artist is just a case of doing the art makes automatically makes you an artist but in my head for some reason that's not enough I need to actually be able to be able to tell people oh I'm an artist that's what I do for a living then I need to be selling art as well so I have to actively go out and try and find ways to sell what I'm making which is what I've been working on the last two years. And it's been a lifelong ambition of mine to be able to say, I'm an artist, that, that's what I do. So that's my motivation. The other thing you need to be able to achieve your goals is the ability to do it. So that comes partly with environment that you can actually, you've got somewhere to paint, you've got some paint, but also the skills to do it. So making an active effort to learn the skills so that I can achieve what I want, which is not much of a challenge for me because I love to learn And I will, I will do that. I will. And when when I first changed from acrylic, I changed from watercolor, sorry, to acrylic. I spent a lot of time learning skills on how to paint with acrylic paint, and really enjoying that process. And the third thing you need is a trigger. They say. So, you need something that in your mind says, now it is time to go and paint. Now, that, so the getting started, that trigger, is my major problem. And one of the things he was talking about in creating these tiny habits is that if you Take something that is already a habit, already automatic, do that and then add the behaviour that you want to make a habit after that, then that helps, that becomes your trigger. So he was using different examples, so he says, well, here's the example he used, he wanted to get fitter and he wanted to create 
a tiny habit, so every time he went to the toilet, he did two push-ups. Now for, <laughs> for Arch, I'm thinking, what's going to be my trigger to say, okay, now it is time to go and paint. So I've decided, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm doing the Fly Lady routines for keeping my house clean and tidy. So they have a morning routine on there, and I've also included on there what I'm hoping will become a daily habit of doing some exercise as well. Like I walk the dog every morning, but it's not enough exercise for, for me in my time of life. I need a bit more to keep that weight off. So one of the things that I've decided is that I get up in the morning, do my normal routine, you know, put the washing on, have my cup of tea. When I finish my cup of tea, I get up and ride my exercise bike. Then have my shower. Do my morning routine in the bathroom of cleaning the toilet and wiping off the sink and things after my shower. Then I get dressed for the day make my bed, have my breakfast, take the dog for a walk, and then when I come back, if there are any, if I need to hang out the washing, or are there are any jobs like cleaning off the kitchen bench, cleaning off my hot spots, which is just quickly going around the house for five minutes and cleaning off any surfaces that have accumulated stuff like they do, then when I've done, that's my morning routine for the fly lady. So when I've done that, finishing my morning routine, I've decided is going to be my trigger to come and paint. Because I often find if I want to achieve something during the day, that is the time when I actually knuckle down and do things. That's naturally a good time for me. And you all know with your own schedule. If you if you have to get up in the mornings and, and go off to work, I've decided that being an artist is, is, is my work and I'm lucky enough to be able to build up my sales and things slowly so I don't have to have a second job. But you can still have a daily art habit even if you are working full time. Your, your schedule will just look very different from mine. So that time right after I've finished my morning routine is the time that I've decided is going to be the time that I do my art. So usually the last thing I do in my morning routine is actually do my makeup. It's part of the fly lady routine. You what they call get dressed to shoes, like you get dressed, if you wear makeup, you put your makeup on, so that no matter what's happening during the day, you're ready for anything. And um, in the past, I haven't always worn my makeup that often, but um, I have been lately. I've been, I've been making that part of my morning routine, because when I am looking good, it makes me feel better, and if I need to go to the shops or anything, I'm not going to feel horrible, I don't want to go anywhere, it's like, okay, I'm ready, I can do anything, if someone comes to the door, I'm not going to be embarrassed to open the door or anything, you know, my house is reasonably tidy, and I'm looking presentable, so all that stuff is really important to me, to get me going in the morning, so the last thing I normally do is do my makeup, so once I've finished doing my makeup, and all my other chores for the morning are done, then I'm going to come and paint. So I've got my reason for why I want to do my painting. I have the ability to do it. I have somewhere to do it. I have the physical ability. I have the people around me who are supportive. And I have a trigger now. So that is my plan. So let's, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it works. And tomorrow could be an interesting one too, because if the weather is good, I had planned on taking the family 
to the beach. So it'll be interesting to see how I go doing my daily art habit going to the beach because I'm thinking I might take my paints with me and actually do some painting on site. And I will try and film that. I've never actually filmed while I've been out. I've only ever filmed in the studio, so that'll be a new experience for me. So that's looking pretty good so far. Just keep in mind that I'm only doing a tiny picture here. And this was going to be another um, one I was doing for a, a greeting card. I made some of these a while ago and before I even got them up for sale, a neighbour came over and said, oh I really like those, can I buy those? So, um, they never actually made it into the gallery or, or made it anywhere to, to get seen by anyone, apart from social media, before they were sold. So I thought, well, it seemed to be quite popular and I enjoy doing them. I'll do some more and experiment with different colours and shapes. And I am using a reference photo but I'm not following it exactly which is the great thing about Northern Lights you can put your own spin on it I don't tend to follow photos exactly I'll use several photos to just to get the idea even when I take my own photos I won't follow the photo exactly and especially when I take my own photos I'll be bringing a lot of the experiences of the day that I had and, and what I want to convey of that because um, a photo just isn't the same as actually being there. So even with my own photos, I'll use several photos to get the idea that I want. And other reference photos that I use, I will also do that. I'll use several photos. So I can't say I've used this photo as a reference because I never use just one photo. I always use three or four or five even or more. And then I'll combine the ideas that I've had from each one to make one painting. Now I'm ready to do the silhouette of some trees here. So I'm going to dry this off before I try and figure out how I'm going to do the trees. Keeping a close eye on the time because I know that I've only got a limited amount of time this morning. So I'm using a black charcoal pencil which is of course not really showing up. I'll see if I can use the white chalk pencil and it shows up a bit better. And I'm just going to do a very rough outline of where I think I want the trees. I think that's all I need for the outline. I'm 
I'm going to have to make some black here. So I'm going to use my phthalo green and my permanent alizarin to make a good deep dark colour which shows as black for this. Because I've got the green, the phthalo green in there already, I want a black that will relate to that. Now I could have just used black paint but I think this will give a bit more depth to the trees because then I can vary the dark more than just using black. I don't very often use just black. This is the only time, apart from doing painting edges, that I really use black is when I'm doing these very simple northern lights. So I've got my alizarin here. And I've got my phthalo green and it's just a matter of mixing them together to get the ratio you want and you can see how dark that will go. This is the mixture I also use when I paint ladybugs for the black on the ladybugs because it fits in well with the greenery that the ladybugs are usually sitting on and it goes well with the red that the ladybug has on it. And I also didn't want to do it the exact same black as what was already on the paper because then I thought it probably wouldn't show up or just blend all together and you wouldn't actually see the trees in places. Trying to get my tree trunk straight. Again, I have that same problem that I'm not actually sitting directly in front of my picture, which makes it a bit more difficult. Only because I'm filming. If I if I wasn't filming, I would be sitting directly in front of my picture. And I'm going to use my fan brush for some of this foliage. Now I didn't put any water on my fan brush, I'm just using my fan brush dry and then putting the paint straight on it. This makes it easy to create those tree-like looks. The, all the leaves and things on it. Now, I think I want to use a liner brush. It's a liner brush, it's long and skinny. This one's number two. I want to use a liner brush for the more distant trees, for the tree trunks for that. Just so I can get them thin enough. And if I had more green in this mixture, I'd get a more green looking dark. Or I could add some more red if I wanted to have a more reddish looking dark. So that's why I make, like making my own darks, because you can really tailor it to what you want to do. is going to blend into the black of the background. And that's okay because it's a nighttime and a picture anyway. But what 
what I could also do is with a little brush or a little stiff bristle brush, I could put a little bit of highlight on some of that foliage. So I'm actually just using the green interference paint here and just suggesting that some of that light from the northern lights is hitting that tree. I don't like this star down here, it's a bit distracting. So I'm going to cover that up. And I'm taking a little bit of the red and just using it on my dirty brush. And on the shadow side of that big tree. I hope you can see this big tree because it is quite subtle. This one's definitely sinking into the background. I might find when it dries I can hardly see it. And I think I quite, I might put a bit of land in there. Well, if I don't like it, I can always paint it out. So I'm just going to have a go. So I'm going to dip it down and then come up. This is the bottom of the picture. This is going to be a greeting card. So you won't see this part of it that much. It's not the main idea of the painting. But then by putting that in, it just allows me to put a couple of highlights where the light's shining on it and just ground the picture a little bit. So the trees aren't kind of floating around in space. Put a little bit of that lighter green, not too much because they are supposed to be in silhouette, these trees. But just so you can actually tell that there's a tree there. fingers to dab the bits that are too bright and I think that one is actually finished so I have done it and that gives me 15 minutes to get home and get everyone organized to get in the car so I'm going to sign off now so thanks everybody for watching 
and I hope you found a nice easy painting task for you to do today and think about how you're going to make this into a habit. Is there something that you do every day that you can then say, okay, after I've done this, I am going to go and paint. And that might be a good trigger to help you actually get started and going. So happy painting everyone, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.